What's going on, everybody? This is Afro Think Tank. Let me ask you a question. What kind of people would, could justify enslaving other human beings and treating them like cattle? What kind of human being could drop a nuclear bomb on civilians in Japan? Like, what kind of human group of human beings could be okay with dropping two hydrogen bombs on a group of innocent people in, in, in Japan? What kind of people could infect a, a group of people in China with opioid addiction simply to take their stuff? What kind of people could just bomb people from the safety of the sky, bomb people who have no weapons for their own political agendas, for their own interests? Like, if you just think about it, right? You know, you know, everybody do their dirt. Every group of people have done their dirt, right? But if you look at one particular group of people, they are expert at doing the most atrocious, horrible things. And sometimes the most brash ones, they'll say it out loud, right? What kind of people would actively try to eliminate all black people from the planet? Biologically, physically, genetically, euthanasia. Because what, what, you know, in Israel, they euthanize black people who come there. They euthanize them. Euthanize, you know, the same people they want us to support, they euthanize our African women over there so they can't have babies. They say it openly. We're gonna euthanize them so they can't have babies. Right? Isn't that the same thing they did in, uh, in America? They, they euthanized us, right? What kind of people could kill an entire group of people and put them in concentration camp for the remainder of their cultural existence? I mean, is it what America did to the Native Americans the same thing that the Europeans who are calling themselves fictional Jews did to the Palestinians by putting them in the Gaza Strip? I mean, think about it. What did America do with the Native Americans after destroying them, taking all their shit and destroying them? They put them in, in res reservations where they're currently right now still women disappearing, right? They perfectly put alcohol and drugs in their communities to destroy their, 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 their family structure, right? Make sure they don't have resources. Basically putting them in the desert in the corner in one of the most worst parts of America and say, you sit right there, right? breaking every treaty that they ever had with these with these guys. Isn't that the same thing that the, the, the Israelis are doing with the Palestinians? I mean, isn't it ironic that the country that was founded and built off destroying the native population, right, and enslaving a group of people would back a smaller country doing exactly the same thing, right, to another group of people? I mean, and I see why America's supporting Israel. It's big brother and little brother, right? But these people, like, They've been saying a lot of stuff, and we it's like we don't pay attention. They'll openly say, hey, we need to kill like at least half these Africans, right? They literally put AIDS in Africa and then tried to say we were fucking monkeys. If we were fucking monkeys, we have been fucking monkeys for a very long time, and we should have been immune by, this, by that point, right? If that's what we were doing, right? They say we were fucking monkeys. And then we black people, we believe this shit sometimes, which is crazy, right? But these people are their ancestors, right? They just think about it. Think about, you know what European history is? European history is Europeans graping murdering and taking and stealing from other europeans they're proud of that shit think about the things that they're proud of they're proud of world conquering they're proud of dominating the vikings they make how many damn netflix and hulu and amazon series are going are we going to see glorifying a group of people who made their living just killing people to take their shit right and then i mean they just literally kill people and take their shit that's what they do and they smile about it they can kill each other. Look, Europeans can kill each other on Monday, go to lunch on Tuesday, and on Wednesday kill each other again. Like, it's no problem. They don't even mind it. They don't even take it personally. Hey, that's what we do. We kill each other. We kill everything. Fuck it. Death. They do things. Their sports, their extracurricular activities involve coming this close to dying, right? These are the people that like to climb up, you know, mountains with no strings and shit. Like, they jump out of a plane with no parachute. Let's see what happens. Like, they do shit like this they don't have respect for life they don't have respect like i don't know maybe they're they have not as a as a human species something in their brain is missing and they don't value life they, but they value death they like to see death they love death they love to distribute death and they love to receive death they just just they are their ancestors and we gotta start dealing with them like that we can't be naive like we always are and think that oh they're gonna change there's always been a group of europeans that weren't about that 
flower power, right? But there's always been another massive group that's like, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, firepower, right? And it's always going to be that same dynamic. It's never going to stop. It's never going to stop until they, until they disappear genetically, which is going to happen eventually. But in the meantime, we're going to have to deal with them as they are. Because they don't got enough gen genetic, genetic code to stay, to stay relevant. I mean, that's just true. And I understand that's what they're doing now. They're trying to survive. But, I mean, come on. Have y'all really been paying? I'm going to put a clip here. I want you to see the shit that they actually say. And the great thing about it is the world is starting to figure it out together. We're all starting to figure it out together. Even the Europeans are starting to figure out that shit together. They're like, damn, I didn't know he was like that. Like, yeah, y'all been like that. You know, and maybe when they enough of them figured out, they say, shit, we don't want to do that no more. We want to do something different. You know, I don't know. But anyway, without further ado, I'm going to hit the clip. That's all I got to say. After think tank learns, I'm teaching something I'm out. Do white people trigger you? Yes, absolutely. Why? Example, name me three black people. Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X. No, oh, at random, name me three white people. Ted Bundy, Jeffrey Dahmer, Jimmy Savile. I rest my case. Is it not fair to say that all races have good and bad people? It's fair if you're a far-right Nazi. At 29 years old, Paul Tibbetts was hand-picked by the B-29 bomber. I had more experience with the B-29 than anybody. It was the biggest, fastest, highest-flying bomber of its time. I thought, boy, I'm glad that they give it to me. I can do it, and I will do it. And by doing so, I might take some lives, but I'll save many more. And that's the thought that ruled me all the way through. On August 5, 1945, at an expense of $2 billion, the U.S. military unveiled the atomic bomb. It weighed 9,700 pounds. Because of its weight, it had to be loaded via a special loading pit. Just before takeoff, Tibbets had the plane's nose painted in honor of his mother, Enola Gay. The crew takes one last photo before takeoff. They're given cyanide pills in case they're captured. On August 6, 1945, the Enola Gay leaves Tinian Island. It would carry out the most violent act ever known. It was the most boring flight that I ever made because nothing went wrong. Twelve hours and 15 minutes later, a fireball of death would drop from the sky. The sky in front of me lit up like nothing you have ever seen. And then wham, we got hit by that shockwave. Tibbetts banks the plane hard to escape the blast. He has just 41 seconds to turn it 10 miles. The first shockwave registered two and a half G-forces on the airplane. Yeah, that was a good kick in the pants. Tibbetts wore welder goggles like these to protect his eyes from the blast. He realized he couldn't see the instrument panels in front of him, so he took them off. But there's something he couldn't escape, the radiation. He says he could actually taste it in his mouth. I was in the turn when that happened. Then I tasted it. And it was like a, like biting on metal. I tell everybody it's like putting a piece of metal in your, in your mouth and, you know, like a sucker. 22 tons of TNT would strike Hiroshima. In this rare film interview, a week after the bombing, Tibbetts describes what his eyes have just seen. We saw this cloud of boiling dust and debris below us with this tremendous mushroom on top. Uh, beneath that was hidden the ruins of the city of Hiroshima. The temperature at the center of the bomb reached 120 million degrees. 70,000 people are killed. The war ended, but not the dying. Radiation sickness. Yeah, white supremacists can kill white people. They look at anybody who doesn't believe like them as the enemy, whether no matter what your color is. I mean, the Ku Klux Klan used to do it all the time. If you help support the black community, they would take you out too. You should uh, get a little facts before you speak, huh? Here's the difference between the Ankh and the cross. Before you get either of these symbols tattooed on you, hear me out. There's a huge difference between the two. For starters, the cross represents death, while the Ankh represents the key to life, both physical and eternal life. The bottom of the Ankh represents the divine masculine energy of the father who produces the seed. The top represents the divine feminine energy. The circle denotes the womb of the woman, because there is no man without woman. The top is also shaped like a stargate.
because just like a stargate, women are portals between this world and the spiritual world. The sides are the ovaries where the seed is produced, while the middle is the birth canal. In order for life to exist, it needs feminine energy. The mother and the father come together and create life. Now let's talk about the cross. Just like the many things that were stolen from ancient Kemet, the cross was one of them. It's a perfect representation of the misogyny within the Bible. The woman has no place on the cross. The womb is completely replaced with masculine energy. Life cannot be created with just the masculine energy of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which is actually the Holy Trinity of Aset, Asar, and Heru. Simply put, the cross is just a colonized version of the Ankh, with a completely different meaning. <laughs> This is the most white people shit I've ever fucking seen. He tried to kill you. What the fuck are y'all doing out there in the middle of nowhere with some goddamn sharks? The French daredevil has fallen to his death. He gained social media fame by taking photos of himself on tall structures around the world. It's been reported the 30-year-old was found dead in Hong Kong after falling from one of the city's skyscrapers. CCTV footage showed Remy accessing the top floor of the skyscraper where they believed he later got stuck. One resident of the 68th floor reported he had knocked on the window of the apartment requesting to be let inside, but they were suspicious and instead called authorities. However, it wasn't until police received a call about a gas leak where they discovered Remy's body and camera equipment. It's believed he broke the gas pipe during his fall. No, I'm not, I'm not saying, uh, I don't know, it's always just weird bringing this shit up, but no, I'm not saying white people aren't evil either, because I know we're evil. I got that evil in me. I do, I can, so I can feel it. That's why I try to suppress it. I try to dress casual, you know what I mean? I'm serious, man. I tried a suit on the other day. I felt it coming up. Like, fuck, man, I want to take over some shit, right? I want to start telling people what to do. I want to go pollute a lake, blame it on my secretary, you know? Dude, I don't even like those movies when they make black and white people get along, man. Even those ones seem ridiculous, you know? Because it always has to be like some sort of lesson in those movies. Just like, you know, I never looked at it that way. <laughs> and it's like that never happens, you know? Anytime I've ever hung out with a black dude, at no point during the evening has he, like, tried to, like, teach me how to dance, you know? <laughs> you know that interracial footloose moment they always have to have in those movies? And I never go to his neighborhood and, like, try to, like, save a school, you know? <laughs> How many times are they gonna make that movie? You know that movie? The white person goes into the projects. Yeah. They just have to make a difference. <laughs> you know, they just made that movie again with, uh, what was it, Hilary Swank? It's like, did you even need to go see it? It's like, let me guess, she shows up and they don't accept her, right? <laughs> and she goes home, she cries to her effeminate boyfriend who's wearing sweatpants and he's cooking something for some reason, right? <laughs> and he convinces her, he convinces her to give it one more chance, right? So then she goes back down there, she starts drawing out their inner beauty. Next thing you know, they put a do-rag on her, she starts fucking dancing. And it's just embarrassing for all races involved. For the love of God, stop making that fucking movie. Dude, the amount of times they made that movie, I would think I would know somebody white who actually did that shit, you know? Just be like, ah, that's Mike, yeah, he saves ghettos. That's what he does, you know? I sit around, I watch Sports Center. you know, he's in the projects every weekend. He's writing his name on the blackboard. My name's Mr. Michael. All right, who threw that? Who threw that? It's just annoying after a while, you know? And it always fucking works out, too. Anytime the white person goes down there, I want to make that, I want to see a movie where it doesn't work out. Like the white dude goes down there the first day, just gets the shit kicked out of him, you know? <laughs> just leaving all negative. You can't fucking help these people, you know? You go down there, you try to do something nice. I couldn't get a goddamn word in. It's a three and all prescription. 